looking back 20 years ago, the community housing sector in New South Wales was pretty small and pretty insignificant. And it's through the activities of your organisation uh, that housing associations are now really on the on the map in terms of uh, providing affordable housing. So I pay tribute to to uh, uh, John and the board and yourselves in, in getting us all there. So, okay, what am I going to talk about? Um, inequality, densification and the rebirth of the private rental market in 15 minutes. And basically it's to, um, it's to sort of paint a, to, to sort of, we're very focused on what we do here and, and the localities in which we work and, and do, do our business. But I think what, what John wanted me to do is just sort of set the context, the wider context in which uh, community housing providers are providing housing for affordable, for affordable, affordable housing for um, people who need it, but a broader context in which you work. And this is not just a, a statewide or a national wide, there's an international context in which what we're doing is being played out, which is kind of operating up there, and I want to draw your attention to it if I can. So the first thing really is about issues around the new urban crisis. Now this is interesting stuff. We've been doing a lot of work on this, research on it, funded uh, in large part by the Australian Housing and Urban Research Institute. But it's about issues around socioeconomic inequality, and I want to talk a bit about that. But at the middle of all this is housing, because housing and inequality go hand in hand, as you're very well aware. We've got new patterns of inequality and, uh, and shifting patterns of inequality in our cities, and I want to talk about that. There's something called the Great Urban Inversion, okay? This is um, not a new dance craze, but it's basically what's happened to our cities over the last 20 to 30 years. It's the inner cities, the old inner city problem, when you're old, as old as I am, you'll remember that, has now pretty much dissipated. Uh, the new city areas of disadvantage are in our suburbs, middle and outer suburbs. And there's a changing role of the housing market over this last 20 years particularly. Um, we've seen the rise of the rental investor. Okay, you can't move away from your, your radios or televisions by hearing about the investors. Uh, we've got a crisis of home ownership. We've got a whole generation of people now who are pretty much frozen out of buying their first home. Uh, and we've got the way in which housing, wealth, and inequality are, in, in, inter, are actually linked together, I can't think of the word, um, but actually inter interlinked together. The, the people with housing wealth are becoming part of those uh, people who have done well out of the last 30 years. So it's an inter-class and an intergenerational problem. And then uh, washing across all that is the issue of urban density. I mean, you can't walk down uh, a street or go through a suburb without looking at a tower block or a, or a crane. We saw a crane earlier on one of you. You're part of this. You're part of the densification <laughs> process. And there's some good sides of that, but there's also some other stuff. So we have governments that don't understand housing markets. Um, there's a spate going on at the moment in the press about an ANU report, which uh, quite rightly proved that uh, increasing housing supply doesn't actually bring house prices down. Um, the Grattan Institute is just about to put a rebuttal on the, in the Sydney Morning Herald, so do read that. We have governments and treasury officials who don't understand how housing market works. Actually, it's not economics 101. So we need joined up and adult policy responses. So what can you do, uh, what role can you play in fixing the problem? Well, I'll just challenge you a bit. Um, built to rent is on the way. Now, with built to rent, you can package all sorts of stuff with it. You can package affordable housing with it, actually. So why can't the private sector just do what you do Slip in a bit, you know, 5% of affordable homes that have cross subsidy from the, from the, from the sales. Uh, they could do your job. Communities Plus, why do they do? Why do they need community housing providers, unless they're told to, to deliver? Um, the private sector is pretty good at doing these sorts of things. The loan aggregator, whatever it is, um, is on its way. Now, the private sector could just take that money and deal with it. Why would you need to be involved why can't Mervac do your business um, and do it cheaper than you can do it? Because they don't need to do the bells and whistles. So, I challenge you, who needs community housing providers? The answer is, we all do. I'm, I'm on your side, I'm just challenging you. <laughs> the struggle goes on, it's not over. Thanks very much.